long time no see. Hey everybody, um, good to be back. Sorry about the long pause there. Had to get some health stuff straightened out, taken care of. I'm doing a lot better now. I still have a little bit of a road in terms of recovery, but glad to be back making videos. Also, in the meantime, I've got almost like 200 subscribers, so that is super crazy flattering. Um, thank you for all the subscriptions and stuff. That's really cool. Um, really appreciate, you know, you guys just being here. This is just real fun for me. So, uh, yeah, thanks for being here. And let's get to it because there's actually a lot we're going to go through for this video. So for a while, it seemed like a lot of companies were kind of on the same wavelength with making these G502 copies or clones, or at least G502 style mice. Razer re-re-re-released their Basilisk, the Basilisk V3. Rocket put out their Cone XP, and the most recent one from Glorious, they put out their Model I. So let's take a look at these, kind of see who they're more tailored for, which one may be something that you'd want to consider out of the group. I was looking into productivity mice because I'm pretty happy with the mouse that I'm using for FPS games and stuff like that. But in terms of productivity, it's not as nice as something larger with more buttons. So all of these mice kind of fit in that group of productivity mice while also being good for gaming. So we'll take a look at them and kind of see which one might be right for you if that's something that you're looking for too. So we'll start with Razer's Basilisk V3. I find the shape pretty good, pretty well built for FPS games if that's something that you want to do. Now I really like what they did with the LED lights on this mouse. Uh, it used to be around the sides higher up, which you know, looks fine, but when you're using it you don't even see it anyway. What they did with this is they put it around the lower edge, really where the mouse meets the mouse pad, and angled the diffuser. So what this does is even though for the most part you're not really seeing that LED lighting, you're seeing the reflection off of the mouse pad surface. Personally, I think this is probably the most interesting and tasteful implementation of LED lighting I've ever seen. Basilisk V3 comes with 10 programmable buttons. There is also a button on the bottom that you can reprogram that's meant for DPI, but you know, it's not really used very much. Cable's good, I have no complaints with it. Flexible, but not too flexible that it gets too floppy and flops underneath the mouse if you're not using a bungee. So really you don't need a bungee in my opinion. Now one thing that some people might not be a big fan of is that it does have those rubber sides like the other, like the Viper Ultimate, Basilisk Ultimate, um, does have those rubber sides. Now, the feature that I think is the most interesting for this mouse is its hyper scroll type of scroll wheel. They call it free scroll. There's no tactile bumps, although you can change that in Synapse. If you want to keep that traditional scroll wheel with the tactile bumps, or if you want it to be completely free rolling. And this is where the Basilisk V3 really shines, is that it comes with a smart reel mode, which is basically a hybrid mode. If you scroll slowly, it'll still have those tactile bumps like you would expect with a regular scroll wheel. But if you scroll very quickly past a certain speed, it'll automatically switch to free scroll and it'll just go. And you can even program one of the buttons on the mouse to switch between scroll modes. I personally don't use free scroll very much at all, but it is very nice and it has a pretty nice sound to it. So we'll do a sound test right now so you can kind of hear what that sounds like. It has very nice PTFE feet, um, nothing too much to complain about there. The only issue is the left side where your thumb rests doesn't have a foot there. So if you're using a very soft pad, uh, something like an extra soft, one of the artisans pad, you'll definitely feel it scrape. Um, I noticed that quite a bit, but just to keep that in consideration, if it's just a really soft pad, you may have some scraping going on. Uses Razer Synapse. If you have problems with Synapse, 
it uses Synapse. For me, I never really had too much issue with Synapse, but again, a lot of people run into problems with Synapse. Specifically, if you want to use that lighting, you're gonna need to have it at least installed and open on your computer to keep that custom lighting setting on the mouse. Uses their Focus Plus sensor, Excellent sensor. They have it in all of their other ultimate offerings. Basilisk V3 comes with their second gen optical switches. I like them. Nice and crisp. Not as tactile and crisp as a regular mechanical, but good enough that it doesn't really bother me at all. And they are rated up to 70 million clicks, so pretty good lifespan there, along with that reduced debounce time since it's optical versus a mechanical switch. Lastly, this weighs about 101 grams, a little bit of a heavier mouse. If you're sensitive to weight in a mouse, that is something to take into consideration, but it is built very well. It feels very sturdy and substantial in hand, so it feels like a very well-built mouse. Now, the Basilisk V3 is typically about $70 MRSP, MSRP, whatever, you know what I mean. There's a lot of sales that come up for Razer Mice pretty regularly, so you may be able to get a better deal. Now, next up, this is the weirdest one of the bunch, in my opinion, the Cone XP from Rocket. This thing has some extravagant, super weird lighting. Now, that's not to say it's bad. If you like RGB lighting, if you like to incorporate that into your desk setup, um, that's something to look at. Along with the lighting, it also has the most buttons. It's got 15 programmable buttons. So if you know that you're going to be using a lot of different macros or functions that you would like to program onto the buttons of your mouse, this is a really good option because you have a lot of buttons to use. It has a very interesting clutch button where instead of the typical placement, it's actually at the bottom of the thumb rest. It's a little unusual, but I actually adjusted to it pretty quickly. Where your typical side buttons are, it's actually split with four buttons. So at first it was kind of weird to get used to instead of just two side buttons in the typical placement, it's the four. But doesn't take long to get used to it, honestly. Cable on this mouse is perfectly good. Just because of how substantial the mouse is, I would probably wanna put a bungee on it, but you can get away without a bungee, no problem. The sides of this mouse don't have rubber, but there are these like ribs that go along the side of it. Um, I didn't find that it improved my grip, but I also didn't find that it made my grip worse. It's just kind of there. It doesn't really improve anything, but it doesn't really worsen anything either. For the scroll wheel, it doesn't have the free scroll like the Basilisk V3, but it does have the left and right scroll, which I don't think I mentioned. The Basilisk V3 does also have left and right scroll buttons. So if that's something that you enjoy, that's on this mouse too. I do like the PTFE skates on the Cone XP a little bit more than the Basilisk V3. They say that they're heat treated. I don't really know what that would do, but it does feel pretty smooth. And they do include a skate on the left side of the mouse where that thumb rest is. So it does help to improve some of that drag. Now, again, if you're using a soft pad, you'll run into the issues with the right side of the mouse, but otherwise it is an improvement over the Basilisk V3. Uses Rocket Swarm. One thing to consider is that the lighting will save to your mouse. So if you have custom lighting, it will save to the mouse. So if you want, you can install it, program your mouse, including lighting, and just uninstall it and it'll save that lighting settings for you. The Cone XP has their Titan optical switches, and it does seem like they improved it a little bit if you've experienced the Burst Pro. The switches on this one feel noticeably better. However, they're not as nice as the V2 optical switches from Razer. They are rated at 100 million clicks, so these are switches that'll last you a very long time. Uses their Owl Eye sensor, which is basically just a 3370. Again, perfectly good just like most sensors and most mass-produced mice nowadays. Perfectly good, no issues. And this is a real, real substantial mouse. I feel like it filled out the hand much more than the Basilisk V3, even though the dimensions aren't too far off. Just something about the shape, it really feels a lot more girthy. And it is also a little bit heavier at 104 grams. Similarly, very well built, feels very sturdy in hand, but the cost is pretty high. It's about $90 for this mouse, and for a wired mouse, it's kind of weird. That's not very competitive with the current market. Lastly, new kid on the block, the Model I from Glorious. It has your typical LEDs on the left and right side, nothing too fancy. It has three side buttons, including a clutch, but it also has magnetic buttons. Two of the side buttons, the clutch and the rearmost side button, 
can be removed and replaced. So there are flat versions where they can't be actuated, and there are also alternate versions of those side buttons too. I left it at the default buttons that came on the mouse. I like those the most, in my opinion. The cable, they call it their ascended cable. Um, again, perfectly good. I used it without a bungee, no issues. It has an all matte surface, no different texture or different material on the sides. And this one does have a in my opinion, a very significant improvement with those skates. It's got six. You have two in front, two in back, and then there's one skate on the left and the right side of the mouse. So there's no mouse pad that you'll use the Model I with that you'll have issues with. Uses glorious mechanical switches, which are rated for 80 million clicks. And because they're traditional mechanical switches, the other thing to consider is that the software that Glorious uses, you can actually reduce the debounce down to zero milliseconds if you want. So it does compete with the low latency of optical switches. The sensor they're using is a 3370 sensor. Again, perfectly good, no issues. Now this thing, blows the others out of the water in terms of weight. It's 69 grams, and then along with that, it's also pretty cheap. It's about $60 MSRP. So in terms of who these mice are for, the Basilisk V3, honestly, I feel like kind of gets lost in the middle. Doesn't have as many buttons as that Kone XP, but it's also not as lightweight and competitive for FPS games as the Model I. What the Basilisk V3 does have is, in my opinion, the most tasteful and cool looking lighting, as well as that smart scroll. The Kone XP is a beefy mouse. It does feel very substantial and it does have the longest switch lifespan. And with all of those buttons, if you're someone who's gonna be using a lot of macros or you do a lot of productivity type stuff on your computer, this is a good option. Now, in my opinion, the Model I is probably the best mouse for just general use. Out of all three, I lean towards the Model I, not necessarily for the weight, but just because there's not an overwhelming number of buttons. And the extra side buttons, I do like. Um, I don't really use the free scroll very much. Uh, it's a cool function, but practically speaking, I don't really use it for anything. And that low cost compared to the others, it really makes it the best value per dollar in my opinion. So too long didn't read, Model I for general use, most people, I think, will like that the most. Basilisk V3, if you really like that scroll wheel function. Kone XP is if you like a lot of buttons and you're going to be using a lot of macros. So that's it. I know that was a huge information dump. So again, I hope this video helps you out deciding if one of these mice are something that you'd be interested in. Uh, comment down below if you have one of these mice and you have a preference. And again, thank you so much for being here. Hope you all have a blessed day. Stay safe. Stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you on the next one, okay? Later.